That's right, Julie. First up is our new series launching tonight called Day in a Career, where we take you inside different companies to see what goes into the job at a local company. First up, we take a look at Mayflower Brewery in Plymouth. So this is almost like a day in the life, but it's a day in the a job in a company that we have locally in our community. Lots of layers to it, Julie. So basically, we were looking around at, we, had, we were spitballing ideas. Once we finished up the Spend the Day series, we thought, why don't we do something about, did you know it was made in this town? Mm -hmm. So we took that idea and kind of expanded on what goes into making that product that's made in this town that you might not have even known Right. was made in this right. town. And the different people that make it. So Mayflower right. Brewery is the first place you stopped. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Its logo is unmistakable. You've probably seen it poured at your favorite tavern or even had one poured for yourself and your friends. And with a name like Mayflower, you might even suspect that it was made by one of the big brewing companies out in the Midwest just capitalizing off of name recognition. Well, you're right about the name recognition, but as for where it's made, Everything from the brewing to labeling and packaging takes place right here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The Mayflower Brewing Company did their first official brew in January of 2008. Since that time, they've become a staple with restaurants, pubs, and retailers. Over the years, they've created over 20 different types of brews. Some of them were one-offs, while others became mainstays. We thought it'd be a good idea to head down to the brewery and talk to the guys who actually make the beer that continues to grow in popularity. If we were planning on getting a close inside look, we wouldn't be going through the front door. We'd have to go in through this top secret side door. And here's where the magic happens. For someone just coming in off the street, all of this machinery may appear a little intimidating at first glance. But if you work here, you see things much differently. I see fun, I see passion. Um, I worked the cubicle job, wasn't for me. Uh, this is a hard job, it's wet and it's hot and it's cold throughout the year, but we come in here and we like going to work. Uh, and you can't put a price on that. Even during their slowest production months of January through early March, this place is still cranking out four to five brews per week, with each single brew consisting of 20 barrels. Once springtime rolls around, though, the team ramps up production to up to 10 brews a week, which means Jay and head brewer Ryan Gavush are often doing double brews Monday through Friday. I'll get in the morning, start the first brew, and then we'll kind of tag team throughout the day. Uh, if he needs to go do something, he'll be free up to go do that. If I need to go do something, I'll be free up to go do that. Having two people makes a big difference. We should also clarify what constitutes a barrel for those like myself who weren't so sure. People that aren't in the industry hear barrel and they think of a keg. So when you were in college or if you're working in a bar, those big kegs are used to seeing, that's a half barrel. So to give you some perspective, two of those is a barrel, uh, and a barrel is roughly, I believe, 31 gallons. So if 20 barrels would make 40 of these, then 10 single brews can yield up to 400 of them. Now, if they're doing double brews, well, you get the picture. Mayflower Brewing Company produces roughly 7,500 barrels in a year. Of course, the beer doesn't just brew itself. Each brew takes about six hours, and it all has to start somewhere. The first process in, the brew in brewing is uh, mashing in. So that would be taking our barley and our specialty malts, mixing them with hot water. And what that does is it activates the enzymes that are naturally in the grains and that will convert the starch that's in the grain to sugars that the yeast, which we add later in the process, will convert um, those sugars to alcohol and carbon dioxide. And that was about all I could really understand. Everything else he said after that might as well have been in a foreign language, and all I could do was just nod along politely. In simple terms, think of this kettle here as the teacup with the bag still in it, and this one as the perfectly steeped cup of tea that's been drained off. For the record, it's way more complicated than that. But once the first kettle has been emptied, they're left with the byproduct. After we utilize the grain, in, in our terms it's called spent grain, we've taken what we need to create our beer, but we have this solid left over. Over here there's a grain out port, we'll open that, and within the mash tun, there's some rakes that we can turn on to plow it all out into this container that then goes into our dump truck. We bring it to a couple local farmers, one uses it to compost for growing organic veggies, uh, the other feeds it to dairy cattle. While the brewers face their share of challenges, for the most part, their day-to-day -day operations are pretty smooth sailing. The brew house is pretty simple, where if you get into the canning line, there's tons of moving parts. Those guys run into more bad days than us. But before we get to the canning line, we should meet the person partly responsible for keeping things running on schedule here in the brew house. He's known as the cellarman. 
Uh, Cellarman basically uh, helps out the brewers, so I filter all the beer, clean all the tanks, um, general cleanliness of the brewery. I make all the casks here and pretty much just help out the brewers whenever they need it. On this day, Alex Cordero was using perlite to filter a batch of porter. In this process, the machine is filled with water to remove the excess air so that it won't create oxidation with the beer. Once the water is in place, it's time to pour the perlite in and let it work its magic. And that settles over the plates of the bell, and the beer basically goes on top of the, the perlite. We use fine, medium, and coarse. So the best way to describe it is pretty much the, the powder creates like torturous pathways for beer, and that catches all the stuff that's in the beer, so when it comes out of the machine, you get a nice, clean pour. Since returning home from the Air Force, Cordero has quickly risen through the ranks here at Mayflower, starting as a driver, then packaging manager, before eventually taking over as cellarman. As for continuing his ascent, he's really in no rush right now. Some people ask if I want to be a brewer. I don't really want to brew beer right now because I want to match the position I'm at right now. I don't want to, you know, go out too quick. I want to make sure I, I know my job first. But uh, I also, I'm going to start keeping bees this year. And so one of my goals for this year is to use some honey that I harvest from my own hives and put it in a beer here. I think that would be pretty neat. If deliberate precision is the name of the game here in the brew house, then rapid succession is the directive for the canning room. If you're quick on your feet, like an action-packed atmosphere, and can handle a little extra noise, this is the job for you. Nothing makes it to the marketplace until it's passed through here. All the packaging from cans to kegs and everything in between into the six packs, but we'll pretty much start off and do cleaning cycles on all the machines. We'll do that for probably the first hour of the day. Get everything situated, because you want to line up, get all your boxes, get all your cans, everything ready, your kegs cleaned, all that stuff. And then as long as there's beer ready, we'll start packaging. They tell us when they're ready. And then we'll bring the beer over into the machine and get it going. The canning room has undergone some major upgrades since our first visit here in 2014. We invested in incredible machinery from uh, this company, CFT. So the canning line, it's a couple different pieces, but the first part's the depalletizer. So you put the cans in there, it lifts them up, this little arm sweeps them onto the conveyor, and then those go down into a rinser, which flips them upside down, cleans them all out, flips them back over, feeds them into the machine. And then there's sensors all along the way to tell you if you know cans are stopped or getting caught somewhere. And then they go into the machine, they go into the filler, and they get purged with CO2 real quick, filled with beer, a little shot of CO2 at the end, and then they go right into the seamer, which puts the cap on the can. That does so we do 12 cans at a time filling and two seaming, two seamed cans at a time. And we can do 120 cans a minute when we're running at full capacity. Then they come through the seamer, out the other side, get sprayed off with water, blown off with air, x-rayed with the x-ray machine to make sure that they're not short, come out, get the date sprayed on them, and then they're right into the cartoner, which packs them into six packs, glues them shut, and spits them out. And once the guys have things wrapped up, it's time to put it away in cold storage for the delivery trucks. But if you can't wait for the next delivery, you should come and visit the newly renovated tasting room. It's open from noon to 8 Wednesday through Saturday and noon to 6 on Sundays. The yeah, tasting rooms are a new innovation for the craft beer market. It, they were not allowed until just uh, two or three years ago. And since then, they've helped spawn this very locally focused industry where folks are able to come to the brewery, try the beer. They may find it out in the marketplace, they may not. Folks are able to come to the brewery and get the freshest beer possible right out of the, the tanks and it gives them a direct sense of ownership with the brewery. They get to meet the brewers, they get to meet the staff, they get to see where the beer is produced, and I think that's a lot of fun for folks. When Mayflower Brewing first arrived on the scene in 2008, breweries in Massachusetts numbered in the 30s. As of 2017, that number has grown to 200. So staying on top of current trends is always a factor to remain competitive. Yeah, the industry continues to be thriving in terms of consumer interest but there's also more and more brands every day. So the challenge for us isn't so much to be a viable business, but it's challenging to grow. So we continue to innovate, uh, come out with new products, and listen to the consumer and make sure that we're brewing things that they're interested in, in trying. And uh, we're having a good time doing that. And if you really like Mayflower beer, the good news is it's not just limited to Massachusetts. So the next time you're traveling across New England, you'll find that the company distributes their product to all six New England states. But don't forget, 
It's made right here in Plymouth. For PCN Life, I'm Brian Sullivan.